the Cornish Beam Pumping Engine, as illustrated by the 40-inch engine on Thomas's shaft at Westwheel Kitty in St Agnes. Originally built by Harveys of Hale in 1863, and now preserved in storage at the Science Museum in London. The importance of Cornwall's mineral wealth has been known since the time of the ancient Greeks, who traded with the Cassiterides, or Tin Islands. The peak period of mining development in St Agnes came in the 1830s, when many of the principal local mines came into full production. During this peak period, Cornwall and neighbouring South Devon produced almost half of the world's supply of copper and over half of the world's supply of tin. All of this was made possible by the invention of a reciprocating steam engine, or beam engine, capable of driving pumps that could keep the ever-deepening mines free of water, driving whims for raising ore from the shafts, or crushing ore. The old Cornish language saying above means St Agnes tin is the finest tin in Cornwall. Centuries of mining in and around St Agnes have shaped the landscape of the village. This is still evident today in the remains of the mines, the ruined harbour and the tiny miners' cottages. St Agnes was particularly good for mining because of its steep valley sides, like Trevornan's Coombe and cliffs, which made it easier to prospect and dig for minerals, and to drain the workings of groundwater. The ore has been formed at the junction of the granite outcrop underlying St Agnes Beacon and Cligger Head, and the metamorphosed country rock which surrounds it. The harbour wasn't accessible by road, and cargo had to be hauled up or down the cliffs by horse whims. To the west of Trevornan's Coombe are ancient tin mines, which run from Wheel Luna, overlooking Trevornan's Cove, Wheel Friendly, and Polpero, towards St Agnes Head. From the Middle Ages, the church at St Agnes provided a focus for a cluster of dwellings.
the steam engine was housed in the tall building. The boiler house, with two Cornish boilers, stands alongside the west wall. Above the mine shaft stands the shear, a hoisting device for hauling pumps up and down the shaft for maintenance. Loads were raised by a man or horse-driven capstan. To assist the engine in raising the enormous dead weight of the pump rod and its fittings, balance beams or bobs were fitted to remove the excess weight over and above that required to move the water load. Gable roofs were covered with Cornish slate. Granite, locally raised, was used for building the foundations and walls of the house. Imported brick was used for the topmost section of the stacks and some decorative features around windows and doors. Engine men took great pride in their job. Engine houses were kept clean and tidy, sometimes with the window sills brightened by potted geraniums, matching the red paint that was the standard colour for woodwork. A Cornish pumping engine is controlled by four valves. First, the governor or throttle valve, controlling the steam pressure to the cylinder and hence the power. Second, the steam valve, controlling the steam admission to the upper part of the cylinder. Third, the equilibrium valve, equalizing the pressure above and below the piston. Fourth, the exhaust valve, connecting the lower part of the cylinder with the condenser. When the piston is at its lowest position and the steam and exhaust valves are closed, the equilibrium valve opens and the pressure above and beneath the piston is equalized. The piston is free to move and the pump rod descends under its own weight, lifting the piston which moves upward. This is called the outdoor stroke. When the piston reaches its uppermost position, the steam valve and a little later, the exhaust valve open. Under the influence of the steam pressure admitted above and the vacuum created beneath, the piston moves down and lifts the weight of the pump rod at the other end of the beam. This is called the indoor stroke or power stroke. During the outdoor stroke, the pump rod forces the water in the shaft pumps toward the surface in a series of stages or lifts up through cast iron pipes known as the rising main. See later. The third floor of the engine house was called the bob loft. This level allowed access to the beam for servicing. Normally, the catch wing comes down to within an inch or two of the spring beam. If, however, with variations of steam pressure, the piston travels too far, the catch wing will bump on the spring beams, and on hearing the sound, the driver will close the throttle valve slightly. The other purpose of the catch wing is to try to arrest the piston and stop it smashing the cylinder bottom if the wooden shaft rod breaks. The second floor, or middle chamber, allowed access to the cylinder head and upper valve chest. This valve chest houses the throttle, steam and equilibrium valves. The parallel motion levers keep the piston rod perpendicular, while the end of the bob follows an arcuate motion. The first floor was also known as the driving floor. Each valve is opened by a dead weight situated in the basement and is closed by the engine through the tappets on the vertical plug rods hanging on the bob. By striking the steam, exhaust and equilibrium horns on the horizontal shafts or arbors, the corresponding valves are forced to close. When valves are closed, 
rotation of the arbors is blocked by latches. When these latches are lifted by a pusher driven by the cataracts, see later, the arbors rotate under influence of the weights and the valves open. Interlocking cams on the end of the arbors prevent untidy operation. The basement houses the valve deadweight and two cataracts. These regulate the instant of opening the steam valve, steam cataract, and equilibrium valve, equilibrium cataract, and determine the interval between the successive strokes of the engine, and hence the quantity of water removed from the mine. The condenser system is situated outside the engine house. The air and boiler feed water pumps are attached to the outdoor end of the beam. The injection valve only remains open during the working stroke. It is used to regulate the water jet thrown into the condenser. During the ascent of the air pump plunger, water, condensate, and entrapped air are extracted, so that when the piston descends, the vacuum is at its highest. Part of the warm water leaving the hot well was sent to a small boiler feed water reservoir, the rest to the cooling water pond. Trevithix, or the Cornish boiler, is a cylindrical boiler having an internal fire tube in one end of which the furnace is placed. Due to its cylindrical construction, this type of boiler could produce steam at significantly higher pressures than the wagon type boiler used by James Watt, making the Cornish steam cycle very efficient. Hot flue gas current from the furnace divides into two side streams on leaving the central tube and returns forward. At the front end, it descends by two passages, reunites into a single flow under the bottom of the boiler, and is finally carried off into the chimney or stack through a damper, which regulates the draft. On the top of the boilers, are the nozzles to which are attached the stop valves leading to the steam pipe and the safety valves. At intervals down the shaft, side pieces are strapped to the main pump rod to prevent the rod falling into the shaft in case of breakage. Should the main rod break at any point, the portion below the rupture would be supported by the blocking girders and a catastrophic failure prevented. Thomas's shaft had a depth of 212 fathoms, or 390 meters. At the bottom of the shaft is a system in which the mine water is collected. A bucket pump drives the water upwards.
All the lifts above the lowest one are plunger pumps, forcing the water upwards by the descent of the rods. On the ascent of the rod, the water enters from the cistern through the entrance valve into the space left under the plunger. On the descending stroke, the water is expelled through the exit valve, up the rising main and over the weir into the cistern of the next lift. From the uppermost lift, the water is delivered into the adit, a subterranean passage cut through the rock to a neighbouring valley, whence the water flows away. These adits are often at a considerable depth below the top of the shaft, and they save much engine power by diminishing the height to which the water has to be raised. 